without a, diff, uh, a consistent golf swing to a certain yeah. degree or a, a level of experience that can allow us to understand what their normal ball flight is. Um, so fitting uh, early golfers is more about making sure that they don't have ill-suited equipment based on their physiology yeah. that's going to make the road more bumpy than it golf, should be. Which is tough, which start golf is tough. So you know, your, your basic entry level physiology, how yeah. tall you are, how long your arms are relative to your torso length mm -hmm. and your leg length, give us a good starting point for those players. Because if you get a, a tall player or a short player who starts the game off with clubs that are off the shelf, then all you're doing is you're making the road bumpier, you're making that process of evolving of the technique mm -hmm. more tricky. Yeah. So if you can just stand next to yeah. this little contraption like so, right foot, sorry, for you, left foot yeah. in the cutout, hip width apart, shoulders back and level, arms hanging down nice and loosely at your sides, just looking at the wall as if you're looking at yourself yeah. in the mirror. Let's do that. That's it. And then just nice and relaxed. And then what we can do there is have a look at how long your arms are and really your wrist to floor measurement. So it's 37 and a half wrist to floor. That's it. That's as yeah. hard as that test is. Yeah. And that will give us a starting point, a point based off. Where we're at. Uh, you're actually in your potentially in our special under the counter shaft links that we can't always keep out on this one. Okay. But we will start you off with a more usual uh, inch over standard as so would you say are potentially longer than inch over standard? there's an argument that you okay. could be as much as an inch and a half so i've always been inch over right handed you're on the borderline where we would always prefer the player to use the it's an argument of the shortest or the longest yeah. Ways, yeah, yeah shorter length um, is always going to be a little easier for you to control from a technique point of view mm -hmm. but if it, if it becomes too short yeah then is that going to affect the way that you can control your posture as you go through the ball? So I would always start you off with there, that first yeah. and foremost. Good. That's our middle of the spectrum head, the rope. So it's a nice game improvement, wide sold, slightly offset iron. Have a few practice swings with that one. And you say this process here, I, don't, I get the eye, the process that you're trying to go through and buying a, or grabbing a few cheaply golf clubs off the shelf is a, a nice starting point to get you off the mark, yeah. but us testing your clubs when you're at your stature is yeah. not really going to no. give us a huge amount of answers. No. How's the ball flight been? Inconsistent. Inconsistent. Very. Um, really, I mean, I, I can hit like ridiculously good shots. Yeah. But I can hit it. What? What's uh, which? Which hand were you in tennis? Left hand. Left hand. Yeah. And the right handedness in the golf was that just down to club availability? I think. I think it's so. Also, and not questioning people when right. I was younger. And not questioning. So I was. I used to play tennis. I'd hit it. And then I'd go, right. And then gradually you, you evolve. Yeah. Um, but there was never questioning golf. Well, it's, it's that whole scenario. Club availability was probably an issue. Mickelson uh, is a right-handed player. Yeah. Learned to play golf by watching his dad effectively in a mirror. Yeah. He's also allergic to grass, which yeah, shows the greatest. It make a rubbish cow. Make a rubbish cow. <laughs> Too bad, is it, Simon? Uh, the beginning of the good. left hander. Yeah, yeah there's. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's learning the game. Of course, it's your yeah.
Job done. <laughs> but we don't know, do we? That's it. You just don't know. Quick question before cool. I forget. Yeah. Ball wise. Chrome soft. Chrome soft. Chrome soft to be. If you're looking for a urethane ball that you're going to get a lot of control around the greens, chrome soft. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more durable, um, the super soft, especially in the winter months, the super soft would be just as good. Yeah. How does that feel to swing? Length is quite nice actually. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting, so I've only had, I have a 6 iron and an 8 iron, yeah. which is obviously standard length, I'm guessing that 6 iron is going to be shorter than this. Uh, be a uh, fraction, yeah, just a fraction. But um, yeah, but it's interesting, that's the longest club that I've swung. Yeah. Yeah, that's and it feels, it feels nice, it doesn't feel, it feels I nice. have felt, because I'm tall, I have felt like I'm a bit Yeah, sore. over the ball, yeah. And that's going like, to where do my hands go type stuff. Well, as, as soon as you can't, uh, you can't take your natural posture, you're going to struggle yes. to maintain what posture you've been forced into during the golf swing. That's as and well as I've struck five balls in a row. Um, and that's the, one of the key elements for an early mm. club fitting is just the physiology gives us such good insight because history has told us that players at your end of that uh, spectrum. physiology spectrum have had good results with clubs that are a little longer than standard, yeah. likely to need to be a little bit more upright. Mm -hmm. The downside is going into the left-handed market, you suddenly become more limited in your choices. So even in a fitting environment, yeah. we can never have the same lie angle options in left-handers as we no. can in the right-handers. Unfortunately, logistics doesn't allow for that. Uh, we have enough trouble trying to convince our retailers to take left-handed irons in the packs at yeah, best. Yeah. But we, we, uh, and I actually oversee that process, and I am, will never let the, the the sales guys get rid of left-handed irons because we're just going to throw throw away all of our left-handed fanat fans because if they can't test them versus tailor-made this, that, and the other, we shoot ourselves in the foot. But having a slightly more upright or a slightly flatter lie angle for the lefties is a little more challenging. So is this standard? This is standard which are an inch over standard, effectively is two degrees upright. I'm not as tidy as you, James. You just hit the same ball over and everything else. That's <laughs> <leading them. laughs> there's, there's an argument for using the same ball over and over again. It slows people's uh, rate yeah, of fire down. It yeah, gets them a chance to slow down. The downside is golf balls are, don't like doing what they do in here. They, no, don't no, last, they don't like it. They don't last very long. They last about three weeks before they start exploding. Yeah. And that's because they're not designed to do this job. No. People get worried about it, but it's super, just super soft. So people hit into nets constantly. They, they if bang, you keep bang. doing it, yeah. Accelerating up to, we can see ball speeds of up to 170, 180 miles an hour, and then it's asked 15 feet later to go down to zero. Yeah. Doesn't like that. That was a good shot. That's a lovely one. How does the weight feel? Length looks really good. Yeah, length feels good. I'm not, I've got nothing to compare it to. Length looks really good. I would say with your club head speed, that's only going to potentially go up a it's little bit. It's only going to go up, isn't it? Yeah. It's but already we, gone up in four weeks massively. Yeah. I think with that sort of, and your experience from the other side, yeah, yeah, um, I think something a little heavier may feel a little more uncomfortable now, yeah, but yeah. going forwards. Would you go any longer as a test today? I wouldn't. No. No, I, I, I wouldn't want to make I it. Don't, I don't know. I Distance wouldn't. isn't everything for me no. at all. I, I, I'm always a little wary of going longer for the sake of going longer. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, sometimes as well as how it looks in the player's hands. Some people, no matter how long a golf club you give them, they, they look really small. Yeah. Um, we, we do have the odd occasion. Even when players of your height, um, actually, we can't measure their wrist to floor measurement because their arms are short enough yes. that we can't even measure it on the chart. Yeah. So this is just a fraction heavier. And we'll say in the, in the early stages, 
for somebody like yourself, a nice game improvement club will be of yeah. benefit yeah. because it will give you that little bit of margin of error. Yeah. Obviously, you're going to have to take into account what your preference as a right-handed golfer would be from a head shape, yeah. beam, yeah. top line, yeah. those sorts of things. But this is a very good option for you in this process. It's just standard road. This is standard road, so it's a, a what we would call the centre of the iron line or the centre of the iron universe. It's our all-rounder. A little bit of offset to help manage that club face back to square. A yeah. little bit of a width of sole because the, the average player may hit a little ground first. Does this come out? That comes out, yeah. I had a, an old colleague who was a classic Swedish uh, stereotype, mm -hmm. blonde, six foot five. Um, so the stats said one and a half inches over standard. He only ever played mm -hmm. half an inch over because that's what he felt most comfortable with. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the scenario. So. It's the old mm -hmm. foul over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely heavier, isn't it? Just feels a little harder work. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But again, it's something that it, this is where you know my question to you is always going to be: Do we fit today, or do we fit in literally probably one or two months' time or three months' time? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's, there's always that. Um, what's likely to happen with given the, your ex, your level of experience from the other side of the ball and motivation and the fact that you are obviously got good hand and eye coordination having played another sport to a very high standard mm. I would always build in a tiny little bit of growth room from a speed point of view yeah. based on those sorts of things The last thing you want is something that's going to suddenly become unmanageable as you develop. You don't want it to be too hard in the initial iteration. No, no, no of course. But you want a little bit of growth room in there from a swing speed point of view. Yeah. So these are just regulars, I imagine. This is, this is uh, a little, KBS yeah, it's a KBS tour regular. Swing speed suggests a little firmer a shaft. Yeah, but, but firmer and lighter maybe? Yeah, we'll, try, we'll try the same with a firmer feel first, okay. see how it feels. Because the challenge we've also got with your stature is that heavier shafts can very quickly become too heavy. Because you're making them longer, yeah. the swing weight can, with the heavier shaft can very quickly, uh, very, very quickly become quite a challenge. Which is one of the other reasons why we'll only go into each and a half and above. Yeah reluctantly. Yeah. In an ideal world you would be able to modify the heads to affect the swing weight dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Reality is um, it's not practical. Not when you're left handed as well. <laughs> <laughs> well we, we get a lot of people, um, a lot of requests because um, they don't quite understand the processes involved. It's like I want an inch and a half over golf club with this shaft and I must have yeah. The swing weight at yeah. C9. C9. Um, yeah, it's yeah. just good luck. Un unrealistic. Um, you know, half a church roof in the grip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, we'd say you, you have to start modifying elements like the grip to start Christmas. utilizing their, the counterbalance nature of those sorts of things to try and get it as close as you can. So, this is the same weight as the previous shaft, it's yeah. just a slightly firmer version. This is the KBS Tour V, so it's 10 grams lighter flex for flex. So the Tour uh, Reg is 110, the Tour V stiff is 110. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. But this has got a slightly firmer feel in the tip section, um, flex for flex as well, so it's a bit stronger.
did end up the old horrible session in here where the, the little old lady where every ball goes into the bird and it's quite demoralising for them. At least it doesn't zoom and follow the ball down. I should switch that off now. Yeah, you fine. can do it. Yeah. How's that feel? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as same as James, I no one puts up in the same bracket as him at all. But it's just so variable, isn't it? Every downswing feels yeah. different. Yeah, and that's and it's kind of, it's kind of and that's where this early in anyone's uh, mm -hmm. golfing career, obviously, you, it's a little bit of a unique scenario because you've got experience to a high level from the other side of the ball. Yeah, with the average player that we'll bring into this mix is it is almost too early for the average golfer to be complete to be custom fitted outside of understanding what's going to suit their flexibility and, and understanding their limitations and expectations. It, and a lot of the cases in these scenarios, it's it's an understanding of what the bag setup yeah. is going to need to be. It's having an, in, it's like the lady that I, that I referenced earlier, it was understanding, it was an awkward one because she was the partner of the owner of the golf club. Yeah. So he was very keen for her to start playing golf. And, and get the right, get, the get right. started, yeah. yeah of so you can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. But she had no real experience of what she should put in her bag what she was coming for sometimes with some of these people um, it is quite an awkward scenario with some people where they've been encouraged to come by a pro who really should be able to deal with those situations himself to a certain degree. Yeah, exactly. um, Did they just want the experience to come? Well, some of them don't even realise what they're coming for. That's <laughs> the tricky thing we have. That's a lovely scenario. That's, great. That's, great. That's, great. That's, That's a perfect shot. Yeah, quite like that. Yeah. And I think if you're looking at something that you're going to purchase for the next year, you yeah, know, exactly. potentially two, three, that, I think that's where... Yeah, there's always that. And how are you going to progress? Um, what's the shot shape development going to be like? Yeah. And I think uh, being so early in the in this development, we're, we're going to have to have a little bit of a now with, yeah, a, with a view to the future. Definitely. Yeah. It's how we... It's how we talk to uh, younger juniors as well yeah. is from a junior point of view obviously you're always tempered with mum and dad in the corner there wanting to have some growth room yes yeah. but there's that are we going to negatively affect the development by making that growth room too much yes um, yeah. in an ideal world to quote mr uh, wish on you fit for the now yeah. and deal with the future later on <laughs> Because if you give a club that's too heavy or too long to a junior, it can cause a lot oh. of swing challenges that they spend the rest of their time trying to get rid of. Okay. Thin one? Okay. I think we we'll probably need to go two degrees upright for you as well. Have you got that in anything? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Sadly. That's fine. Sadly. <laughs> course management yeah, is, yeah. A, is, a, is a major influence on this. So this is yeah. 10 grams heavy. Okay. And it's, it's that scenario, you've got all the, the, the game management skills from yeah. getting down to a low handicap. Um, so you've just got to bring up the physical skills yes. this side of the ball to that sort of level. Mm -hmm. And you should be able to get into the, into the single figures quite comfortably. Open as a lefty, and the USJ wouldn't let him in because he parked left hand in the tour. 
Oh, right. Yeah. Because he used the left handed putter on the tour and it wouldn't allow him to play in the USA. Or the USA tour. Oh, US Amateur. US Amateur. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which you can understand. He said if he putted right hand, then they wouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah. But just because he putted left hand. That's interesting. I've been there. I'm going back into the late 80s. Oh, yeah. Feels a bit better. Mm. Yeah. There's always going to be a, with you a certain element of what feels right for your right hand golf. So yeah, interesting. I played KBS Tour yeah. X in right-handed in longer, yeah. um, and I've always Project X has always been yeah. for me. But I, <laughs> I'm a big dude, so I'm seven or eight down with my yeah. set of seven nine. Yeah. I'm not I'm shallow over that. <laughs> It's, it's able to it's quite hold the uh, wrist angle into the ball. Yeah. yeah. Your, your left hand and your right hand are kind of. They're not working. The yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm, so I'm, the skills you have with your, with your right hand, you golf. But I'm keen to keep <coughs> that shallow. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, most people end up too steep. Yeah. Definitely a weakness there. been a few advocates over the years that you should play the game opposite to your natural tendencies. Um, and, and then there's the counter argument where um, you say the right hand side is the power side in the game of golf. Yeah. Um, and Hogan was a lefty who played right hand. Again, that was a purely a club availability thing. Yeah. And he and never felt like he could beat it hard enough with his right hand. Yeah. Famously quoted to say in the five fundamentals, I wish I had three right hands. Exactly. <laughs> Throw more power at it, it's exactly. fine. What we're seeing a lot more left hands come through is because left handedness is not quite so uh, hard to manage. It's still harder junior. to manage from a tech, from a club point of view, but it's, there's no stigma on being a left handed golfer no. uh, at all. And we see a, a relatively high percentage of left handers uh, to the industry because we're one of the only places somebody like yourself as a left handed golfer going forward is going to have options. Yeah. Um, we do have a challenge trying to get the average retailer to buy into left handed demo equipment because they don't see a return on the investment. And it always comes down to that ROI is what we always work with. Um, right, well that's definitely the best. That feels better. That's the best, yeah. And then as your swing develops, because my physiology suggests two upright, yeah. but I actually play one flat. Yeah. And that is purely because I've got a very shallow inside delivery. Yeah. Um, and I hate the ball going left. Yeah. I'd much rather that ball go right. Yeah, right. As a miss you with my right. You grew up in an area where inside was the only way. I grew up on a golf course, but if you hooked it, you got yeah. away with it. So we all learned to hook it. There you go. <laughs> All the trouble at the course I grew up with was on the right hand side of the fairway, barring one hole. Right. So we all missed, all of us. One of my old junior strong is actually upstairs in our tour department. It's oh, a small good. industry. Yeah. Um, we all learned to hook it. Just because of where we played the game. It's a bit like an angle. Oh, used to stick there. Definitely, definitely too up. Yeah, it's got to be, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. No, it's like St Andrews. Um, there was the argument that um, how um, John Davies won round there is because his bad shots take hook. So standing at St Andrews, he can hook it as much as he wants and it'll be on the fairway because yeah. there's always a fairway to the left hand side. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. It's why you see? It's also one of the reasons why you potentially see a lot of. Uh, Higher, a relatively high percentage of left handers who win at Augusta. Because the course sets up for a draw for the right hander, right. which for the average right hand tour profession is a bit of a. With driver, essentially. Yeah. 
whereas somebody like Mickelson and the left handers can stand on uh, 10 and cut it round the corner. They can stand on, on 12 and cut it round the corner, which to them is a much more controllable ball flight. It's a much easier ball flight for them to manage. So there is an argument that some courses set up better for some players. I think the one they complain about is 18, whereas the right is fading it up 18, the left but is drawing it. it's not long enough, it's not that long, is it? They can just pump through with shorter than well, I don't know through. where they put that tee now. Oh well, yeah, that's <laughs> just keeping back. It's oh, ridiculous no, how long they've made Augusta. Okay, yeah, one more and I'm happy. Yeah, any more? We'll move on. It's a run for the fun bit, yeah. it's all really interesting. Yeah, I mean that's, that's fine. Yeah, you'll for, get for where I'm at, that's, yeah, that's so fine. much better yeah. than what I'm and using. And that's got a little bit of flow in it for you. It's got a little bit of ability to, to move with the yeah. It's not and again, unusual. It's not unusual for us to sort of not quite go the full inch over in the oh, high. Oh, definitely not. Yeah, yeah, quite. And fairway, which we wouldn't even entertain it. No. And there's no point making no. a fairway. And again, it suddenly starts getting too much. It's unknown. That's always the tricky one when we have juniors come through. We have to be a bit wary when we know a junior is coming through and how big they are. Yeah because there is only so much product we can carry from a short club point of view. Okay, exactly. And from it, history has shown that the majority of players at your, your end of the physical spectrum tend to feel, always feel a bit more comfortable with the threes, the fours, the hybrids, the yeah. fireway woods, because you're not so compromised in your posture, yeah. the no, longer really. the clubs, it's the shorter clubs that start to cause the problems. Yeah. That's when, when we start getting into that. Well, what's too short for a tall player? Yeah. Is what's how that how's that going to affect the wedges? This is where the ability yeah. disappears. Loft's always going to show up your tendencies. Oh yeah, yeah. and length of club. Le well. Yeah. And this isn't massively longer than that six iron no. I think. No. no. I think we'd need to add had a, a half an inch mm -hmm. to these because they're already uh, longer than the standard iron would be at this yeah. length anyway. Very much, uh, uh, let's get an example of each type yeah, of, course, of golf club exactly. in your bag to give you that mix of and just to give me that experience, yeah. Because well. you're never gonna you're never gonna learn to hit a, a, a wood left handed unless you have Got something on. to practice with. Um, that's always my argument with people, and they say, Well, I'm not very good with these. Well, how are you gonna get you never gonna one get if you haven't got one in your bag? The other flip side is where they come for a fitting for a driver, Ooh, where they think yeah. buying a new driver is going to offset the fact they don't know how to eat it. Um, we get that a lot. And I've come to get some golf clubs before I have the lessons. Uh, I would always counter that. We're going to have the lessons first, and then get the clubs fitted to you, um, to a certain degree. yourself of where you were all those years ago well, playing the game yeah, yeah, to give you a bit more appreciation of what your lessons go through yeah, and all yeah, those sorts of things. It's, it's, much, it's a much more natural miss, the slice, which is why most of our clubs have a draw bias of nature to them because yeah. the majority of our customers struggle to turn properly, struggle to release their hands properly. Yeah. Be, be where I'd look for four, four hybrids. 
every I think six eight wedges. Yeah, I think that you spend some sort of versatile wedge or two versatile wedges. Yeah, again, it's uh, it, it's a relatively straightforward sort of selection process mm. to a certain degree with these sorts of things. It's these sorts of scenarios with players. It, again, it's not an uncommon one for us to have a conversation with somebody in regards. Uh, Customised clubs with a fairly limited. Yeah. Um, it is more about. Well, let's get some examples of what we need to play. We understand we need a variety of clubs to be able to learn the game with. Really. Go on, sit one more, and then we'll have a. Have a go with this. Play with a fairway. Is there a wrapper coming off that? <laughs> nice. That's yeah, always a pleasing. We operate thing. a wrapper on policy for all the clubs. Yeah. Until we have to use it. Is one person that lovely thought that they're the first one to sky it? <laughs> there we go. Let me just doing that. We started doing that a few years ago um, because we were just to give us an idea of what, what we doesn't get used do. exactly. Yeah, something something will go through a two year cycle without being used, I imagine. Um, yeah, we keep the wrapper primarily because if the wrapper's on, we can show it back into stuff. <laughs> we can sell it for full price then if it's not going to be. Um, as soon as the wrapper comes off, it becomes a soil good, and we can only sell it at a certain uh, at a discount price. We also realised that actually we were we were actually utilising or using up a lot of componentry and a lot of inventory that we never actually used. Yeah, just why not? Yeah. Mm. Especially this. This is a five. What's the difference between the Rogue and the Rolex? Rogue and Rogue X. Um, the X is, is kind of that X factor scenario. It's designed. Uh, it's uh, it's a tricky one to explain. It is an out and out distance combination. It's very strong lofted with very with full speed in mind. Yeah. So they are um, the X is effectively like a, a magic material. It's the sort of uh, the pumped up version. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, it's rogue on so steroids. Exactly, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a wider sold, um, bigger headed design, um, iron and kyber combination with very strong lofts. And the idea of the very strong lofts is, is it maximises ball speed, but the way the design of a head uh, works is the launch angles aren't negatively compromised because of the strong lofts. So you get. And what we get a lot of people who are just purely, mm. they want to hit ball as far as they can. Yeah. Um, and that's even <laughs> certain pros of that one. Okay. Um, I had um, Steve Milka singing a couple of months ago. And uh, he came, came wanting to move from some fairly traditional Mizuno lines that he'd been using for a couple of years. <laughs> To something a little bit more friendly, and he came specifically to test the Rogue Pros because he heard really good things about. It. But being quite a, an organised player, he'd done his research and he'd also heard about the Rogues and the Rogue X's, and he was almost tempted by the Rogue X's because they went so far. Um, but he was right okay. in his final decision because he was about to go off on a six to eight week uh, run of events down in uh, the Far East on the Asian tour, oh, right. um, and the challenge with the X for the stronger player is uh, they'll go a long way, but they'll go a long way with not a lot of spin, um, and he was, uh, I think he found that even with the rogues that he went with, he hit them wonderfully in here, but once a bit of grass got between the ball and the club that his club had spin, it became a little too hot. Um, Spectators are in danger yeah. at the back of greens. Oh, why? That's in the seat. Jeeves, one of the most, <laughs> the most men, uh, Oh, back in imagine. You could ever imagine. He's such a lovely guy. Polite, I imagine. But he does everything very individual. Oh yeah. Very individual. Yeah. Unbelievably consistent. Oh well, you don't get to that level without being unbelievably consistent. Um, very low on the yeah. Very strong draw with a very very open club face. Well, you just do that, shall I? Yeah, yeah that's 
it's lovely. It? It strikes me it's great. It's a very good dog. It is. It's a very good dog. Like it. I'm not striking it amazingly. Oh, okay, 1.45 smash on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buff face is just a tiny bit shut to the path, so that one. That's only. That's just 10 paces off dead straight. Yeah. Just over 10 paces off dead straight. 225 yards. Yeah, but the last one is in someone's picnic on the beach. It's <laughs> <laughs> really like Exactly, that. I know. interesting books I read when I was coaching um, was uh, a book that Nick Price wrote, I can't remember the title okay. of it as it is, and it's part biography, autobiography, and part coaching um, uh, journal. So he, okay. he, he basically, um, there's some coaching elements in there based off his experience with Ledbetter, but it's basically his life story, up until when he had his most successful years in the late uh, mid-90s. And there's some f some wonderful imagery in there as well. One of the th oh, he said one of the biggest lessons I learned was that good days and bad days are totally unrelated and can happen side by side. Yeah. And the sooner you understand that and enjoy the fact, yeah, yeah. you'll never really enjoy the game. And he said as soon as I realised that I could shoot 62 one day and 78 the next, the more likely I was to shoot 62. 100%. Yeah. Because he was known for having fantastic rounds and then disappearing for the rest of the tournament. And that's yeah. what he spent his time working on with Ledbetter, his consistency. This is how I can increase speed. I would say that a generalisation to a certain degree with the, with the driver, with the majority of our early starters, we tend to encourage that default shorter shaft length straight away yeah, yeah. just to encourage a bit of confidence so with that so that's more likely to be kind of kind of standard or slightly shorter for me being yeah, yeah. one of the, one of the most confusing things we do to our retailers is somebody like yourself even if you're a fairly competent golfer at six foot four six foot five is it's not unusual for us to recommend an inch over in irons and an inch under in driver yeah, yeah. even if they're a pretty good golfer because it's all about centimetres of contact and obviously yeah. the length of the club in the iron category is as much about turf interaction and capability of striking the ball well as possible. Mm. They're, usually, they're usually in the people who have bought in the, to the tour sold. You can't hit it much better than that. Okay. Nine feet right of target, <laughs> 240 with a perfect draw. Now, Taylor made drivers are amazing when you, when a player hits them right out of the middle, they really are fantastic. Uh, unfortunately, they end up in the hands of uh, customers who don't hit the middle of the clock face often. Healer, 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 Taylor made. I was so amazed with that when you get in that shorter driver. Yeah. Oh yeah. The change feels amazing. Sharp and then, and then you don't want having a swing at it. Yeah. It's confidence. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly that. Confidence. Confidence. Some people can manage a longer driver. Some people can't. Mm. The only guys who use the the maximum length driver. Uh, from a regulation point of view, the world long dive guys, yeah. mm. because they're looking for every every ounce they of swing. Need to get one in six. They need to get one in eight balls twice <laughs> to beat the guy they're playing up against. Oh, that was, wow. a, that was sort of an enlightening thing when we started like, looking into that. And obviously, we look after a lot of uh, long drive guys because our CEO is an absolute long drive fanatic. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, we look after a, a lot of long yeah, drive Joe guys. Answer. Joe Miller, for argument's mm. sake, is I never realised it was match play. I always thought it was who hit the ball the furthest. It's no, like it's just straight match, match yeah, play. Yeah. You've just got to beat the, the player you're playing yeah. against. You, you get somebody who doesn't hit it in the yeah. six each time. You just well, and that's it, yeah. 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 You've yeah, got two that. minutes to hit eight balls as far as you possibly can. Yeah. And they take the longest one. So you can actually, let's say, just put one in play and then the rest of them you can hit as hard as you want. And it's not, and it's the irony, it's not always the longest hitter that wins. Oh, no, no, it's always match play. It's yeah. match play. And when Joe won it two years ago, he did hit the longest drive of, of the event in the last round. They actually ran out of yeah. fairway. But he'd already won it by then, so yeah. that was a free hit. Yeah. 
and, that's, other... that, and that's a completely different yeah. kettle of fish because once it's free, you know, just yeah. literally bomb it. Yeah. How's that feel? It's okay. I mean, it's right. He's over there. That's good. It's is what it is, isn't it? That's nice. Blocky. You take that. Oh, yeah. I'd take that after 30 years of playing the game with my driving swing at the moment. Most of my golf is played on that high in this room. Yes. <laughs> I rarely play golf outside. Rarely, really play golf outside. The only other place I hit loads of golf balls is at St Andrews, but that's out of the bag. Yeah, down the other end. <laughs> Doing product testing down the yeah. other end, yeah. Around Nine, hovering on that 90 mark, so in between stiff and regular again. Flush that one. 103. How's that feel to swing? Does it feel, does it feel light, heavy? I've got nothing to compare it to. <laughs> so I've got a King G2 under that drive yeah. with the regular graphical glue, so it's completely different. Well, our regular graphaloid blues are very different. Is pro it, launch is blue. it a pro it's launch? Not, yeah, it's pro launch. It's not that, that was my next question. Is it the blue or the pro launch blue? Yeah, so I've very got, different I've got an X blue yeah. in my right hand driver, yeah. which, is, which is migrated from every driver I've had throughout the last no, that's it. Blues, are, years. blues <laughs> are unique shaft. Yeah. Change sleep. We, uh, we, we have that challenge with uh, Quiros and Stenson. Yeah, Quiros still uses it. Yeah. We'll not change it at all. Right, okay, let's try and see if we can. So that's then, so this is then the game, right? So I've, I've bombed one, whatever that other one was. Yep. I've then topped one. So now I've got to stand on the next team, just find the fairway. But that's what, again, that is why I would say you've got a head start on the average golfer starting in the game because you understand. Like that, yeah. Yeah, you understand. <laughs> yeah. Right, just find the fairway. something else shaft my, length my wise? one worry is that one swing you made where your club head's feet jumped up I think yeah, but I, I, only do, I only do I'd only do that when I felt like I had that space to do it maybe yeah so potentially what what are you thinking so because I think my swing speed will eventually get to that longer one yeah that's what that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking a little shorter but also in the fairway woods actually going and possibly the hybrid going a little heavier in the shafts to allow for that development. Yeah, okay. A bit like the iron. So mm -hmm. going into this even flow blue shaft yeah. through the driver, the hybrid and the fairway wood. Okay. Um, just because it's a fraction heavier and a bit firmer, mm -hmm. that you're on that cusp um, between regular and stiff and you've got a relatively healthy club head, uh, swing speed um, yeah. and also a, or an already healthy club head speed, but you're quite quick in the tempo as well. Yeah. So something a little too light may give us some nice ease of swing now, but it might become a little, again, a little bit of growth Soft, room. Yeah. Yeah, just a tiny bit of growth room. Yeah. Yeah. I need that to cut back to the middle, but it's not going to. Oh, a little bit low on the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Right. But, but that's fine. That's still down the fairway. And that was the biggest difference. So I did my, I did my three handicap cards with just the five wood. Right. Then I managed to find the driver in the loft that worked. And that made the, that made the big. Obviously, had the improvement over the couple of weeks, but yeah. that made the big improvement. It's just. That miss hit with a five that goes 100, 100 yards, 120 yards, it just skies up to the right. Oh, I'd always, I'd always be an advocate of players learning to the drive with everything, yeah. Even everyone. for the average player, the size of the head. Certainly so now, more, certainly nowadays. Yeah. So much more forgiving the big head. Yeah. You know, rather, rather somebody have a 15 degree driver than a 15 degree three wood. 
Because A, it's confidence. It's getting them hitting driver. It's a bit more margin for error with the driver. Exactly that. The, the moment of inertia on the driver. The resistance to that. They are only broken one of my golf balls. Oh, and on camera. Were you standing in front of it? No, I think I might. <laughs> <one. laughs> yes. <laughs> Break that ball. I'm taking that home. <laughs> taking that home. That's me. <laughs> Um, and more responsibility for that ball, not the, not the 15,000 people that have hit it for me. <laughs> oh, and some people get all excited when they break it off. Just like that, yeah? <laughs> A bit like that. Really excited when they break it off. So I would track man every so often, and it's a unique thing in here, is um, we get some seven iron shots that come off with driver like backspin rates yeah, yeah and they suddenly see the ball go flying 30 40 yards further it's through the air oh, i've hit that one really well and we're going over to hit the delete button yeah exactly because we know it's a misread you get it the other way so yeah. we get a double spin yeah. and you won't go nowhere we actually get the opposite it, it ends up measuring it a little too low mm -hmm. trackman can't answer why it's a unique thing for this room You've got the right distance. We've got, in an ideal world, if we could go 10 feet further back, we, we, we probably wouldn't even need the dot. No. But, especially with the higher ball speed players. She's got the last one. Yeah. Yeah, one downside is the lighting in here is not good enough to use their new uh, camera based centre missive contact yeah. uh, element. It's just not bright enough. Yeah. So yeah, it's a bit more. Uh, so you can yeah. just, just it's always a way. No matter what system I've used over the last 15 years of using track track yeah, yeah, technology, yeah, yeah, in there, so they right, always don't. miss the good shots. They never miss the bad ones, they always miss the good ones. Yeah, the one that bounced here and then yeah. Yeah. It's it there. got that, didn't it? Yeah, got that one. The um the Trackman 4, because it's um it's set up um for uh, short game and for their uh, simulation software, mm -hmm. it's very sensitive to club movement. The three will not pick up a club uh, a practice swing. Yeah. The four will, and suddenly you'll, you'll make a little swing like that, and it registers. And it, will, it, it stops looking for the ball sometimes. It just looks for the club head movement, which is primarily what what it does for um, to get it to trigger for putting. Yeah, of course, because there's very little. Because there's very little movement. Yeah. If you don't realise it's happened, you start looking at some of the averages on the screen and they look a bit skew width, and then you suddenly look and there's one that's gone 1.9 yards. Mm -hmm. Quite efficient. Efficient speed. I think it's close, close. Okay. And that's a little shorter, a little heavier. So this is an inch shorter than standard? That's half an inch. Half an inch shorter. They your little miss strike with that. Definitely which, find it easier to hit the club first. Yes, definitely. Top. <laughs> Fairly. 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 That's one of those other ones in golf is you, you learn when you're a golfer, the more you crow about a good round, the more likely the next round's going to be the worst you've ever had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Expectation levels are a very no. big, no. a very big weight on your shoulders. They get in the way of my golf, that is for sure. Yeah. Even though I know it, I still no. carry on. Let's go after one with this shot. Get up over that hundred mark. Very, very good shot. Take that. Mm, yeah. A little off the toe, maybe. Yeah, fraction, yeah. fraction. That's where you get your high smash factor. Yep. Toe strikes always give you a bit more ball speed because the toe is moving faster than the, the average mm -hmm. of the club head. Yeah. I can't remember what the ratio is, but the heel moves noticeably slower than the toe. So when you get some of those very high smash factors, it can be just where the the average head club head speed is is, is given. You get that fat as well. Yeah. So. Trackman actually measures the, the toe, the centre and the heel of the club and averages out the speeds. But if you get one off the toe, it's moving fast enough that it can rip. If it's a stable enough club it can produce some very fast ball speeds for an off-centre hit. Oh, that's a swipe. Mm. Yeah, 
can do it all right with that, I think. Mm. You take that one. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, so it's, it's good. I'm, I'm pleased that that's, it's a stable enough. Yeah, that's very predictable. Consistent, aren't they? Mm -hmm. If you've only been playing this side of the ball for six weeks. Yeah, yeah four weeks. This is the first of August I started, yeah. so we're literally... <laughs> 31 days into the process. Yeah. We've done very well. And you're already within 100 yards of when you're playing right-handed. Yeah. <laughs> probably get away with a little bit more loft. So pop But that's that. where you could adjust this and then later on down the line. Yeah, that's why I kind of go middle of the road for you with uh, the loft at ten and a half. Yeah. It'll give you a good starting point. You can always bring that down to nine and a half. Yes. Walking hand in hand on the ocean floor Down deep we wonder Louder we sing No, there is no cure 